Chapter 3, Section 9, Differentials. All right, now in the last section, we uh, looked at Newton's method, and this is an example of using the tangent line, and we use it to approximate a graph and to find zeros of a function. But there's more than one approach, and there's more than one uh, set of notation that you'll see to help us do that. So if we look again at the tangent line, which is the difference in the y values, here's my diagram. This point here where the point of tangency is C, F is C. The tangent line is drawn here kind of in an orange looking color here. As you can see, I even called it tangent line. And this is our C value here. This part right here, X minus C, is the actual difference here in the X values. And what we like to do is we like to call the difference in the X values delta X or the change in X. So this is from C to C plus delta X, where this delta X is the change in the X values. And you can see that's this distance from here to here. Now what we're uh, interested in is not only uh, the change in the X values, but the change in the Y values are delta Y. Now delta Y, this is part here that's denoted with this little brace here, delta Y, which is the difference in the Y values from here to this point here of, uh, that's on the curve. And this is the guy we may be interested in finding. So we'd want to find that difference in those Y values here. If we can find delta Y, that'll help us with that process. Now, what I've tried to do also is I've tried to draw a little bit here that if this point here is C, F of C, then that means that's the X value. F of C, F of C would be the Y value. And this Y value here, um, as you can see, is F of C from this plus this much more are delta y. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to figure out a way to approximate delta y given delta x. And I can do that by using this tangent line because this point right here uh, on the curve, which is showing that I have this amount and I have this amount, this amount is close to this amount. It would be better if I moved it a little closer, made delta x a little bit smaller. But this guy here is what we're going to call f prime of c delta x. And this is from the tangent line. That's from this guy right here. So if delta x is small, then delta y is the difference in the y values. is very close to this part right here of my graph. Now, I know that might be a little bit hard to, to see because there's so much information written down. But take some time to study this because the change in the y values, the change in the x values here, we're calling delta x. The change in the y values, we're calling delta y. I'm saying that I can approximate this change in the y values by using f prime of c delta x from the linearization. So if delta x is small, delta y is a good approximation, which is the difference in the y values, is, is uh, approximated by f prime of c delta x. Now, when this type of an approximation is done, the delta x we traditionally call this change right here, we traditionally denote it as dx. Now, I know that you've seen dx before because you've seen it in Leibniz notation or Leibniz notation, dy dx, but dx here is called the differential of x. And the differential of x is what we call dx here. But f prime of c d, uh, dx, that's this part right here, because remember, this is dx. This is what we denote as dy. This is the differential in terms of y. So I know that the, uh, the uh, vocabulary, it might be messing with you a little bit, and the notation a little bit with you. But we'll define what a differential is right here. Now, differentials are kind of variables here. It says, let y be f of x represent a function that is differentiable on an open interval containing x. So kind of like my diagram I had from before. The differential of x is denoted dx is any non-zero real number. That's what we said it was the delta x. But the, uh, the differential of y, which is denoted dy, is equal to f prime of x dx. That's this guy back here. This is my dy right here. Now, the differential of y can be used to approximate the change or delta, uh, or delta y, as I tried to show you before, that this can be used to approximate this difference right here. Now, again, this looks significant, but if I have this a little bit closer, it's going to be much smaller and it's going to be a more exact approximation. So we can say that delta y is approximately dy or that delta y is approximately f prime of x dx because that's what we're defining dy as right here, f prime of x dx. Now let's try an example. Let y be 2x squared plus 1. So that's a nice little uh, quadratic function. We're going to uh, find dy when x is 2 and dx 
is 0 0.1 and then we're going to compare this with delta y when x is 2 and delta x is 0 0.1. Now let's start with finding first, let's find dy. Alright, now we know that dx is 0 0.1 and we also know that dy is f prime of x dx. So I need the derivative here. So I start with over here. I'm going to write y equals 2x squared plus 1. So uh, in terms of differential, or in terms of uh, the derivative, this is dy dx is equal to 4x. So that's my f prime of x. And in this case, my f prime of x is when x is 2. So dy would be f prime of 2 times dx, which is 0 0.1. So f prime of 2, this is my f prime, maybe you like that notation better, is going to be, what is that, I'm going to plug 2 in, I'm going to get 8, so this is 8 times 0 0.1 or 0 0.8. So that's dy. Now does this approximate the difference in the y values? Now the difference in the y values, delta y, because that's where it says to find x, delta y is f of x plus delta x minus f of x. It's the difference in the y values. So this would be f of, now x in this problem is 2 and dx is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 minus f of 2. So this is f of 2.1 minus f of 2. Well, let's plug 2.1 right into our function here, right into our uh, quadratic function. So I'm going to have 2 times, let me get Mr. Calculator busy here. I'm going to have uh, let's see, 2 times 2.1 squared uh, plus 1. So this is going to be 9.82, and I'm going to subtract from that f of 2, which I should be able to figure out my, myself. That's going to be 2 times 2 squared, that's going to be 9. And I get 0 0.82. And you can see that dy did in indeed come up with a decent approximation for the difference in the y values. Now this is kind of cool, but there's more to it than just this. I'm just showing you a very basic example of how we can use the differentials to approximate. Now what I also want to do before I can get into an actual uh, example of approximating here uh, is that I want to uh, make uh, sure of some of the uh, notation and also uh, show you how you can use the differentiation rules back in chapter 2 and write them in differential form, including the, the product and quotient rule. So if we let u and v be differentiable functions in terms of x, then the constant rule says that the differential here, cu, is equal to c times the differential of u. And uh, kind of looks just like what we are used to before, where you see the d and think of it as the derivative. So it's the constant times the derivative of u. Okay? And the, different, uh, the, uh, the sum and difference here for u plus or minus v uh, the differential of that is equal to differential of u plus or minus differential v. Or in this case, du plus or minus dv. And here's the product rule. First one times the derivative of second plus second one times the derivative of first. And here's the quotient rule, which is the low d high minus i d low. It's just that we're writing it in terms of the differential. And then you say, well, why in all that is good and holy would we want to do that? I'm just now learning my rules and have them down. Why would I want to write them in terms of differentials? Well, that's a coming. That's in chapter 4. So we're kind of setting it up for there. But here's an example where we have a function y equals x to the third. dy dx is 3x squared. That's what you're used to. But now we can write it in terms of the differential that dy is equal to 3x squared dx. Now, when I first saw this good, back in good old Calc 1 with Dr. Ringenberg, I just kind of looked at it like this. Oh, it's kind of like he took the dy and you multiply both sides by it to write it this way. And it's not really what's happening, but it's a good way to perhaps keep track of it. If my function is the cosine of x, y equals the cosine of x, then dy dx is negative sine x, right? But the differential y, dy, is equal to negative sine x dx. You're going to see this notation when we get to integration. Okay, so let's find dy if I have y equals x to the fourth plus 5x. If it helps you, first find dy dx which would be 4x to the third plus 5, and then write it in terms of the differentials, that dy is equal to the quantity 4x to the third plus 5 dx. Similarly, over here, first find dy dx. So I have to do the chain rule. This is the cosine of 3x times 3, which is, of course, 3 cosine 3x. 
in terms of the differentials, dy is equal to 3 cosine 3x three dx. And you can write it just like this, or you can put this in parentheses if that makes it a little bit easier for you. All right, now, differentials are used, they can be used in the formulas to set up for the approximation because we know how dy approximates the delta, uh, delta x, or excuse me, delta y. So differentials can be used to approximate values, not just the zeros. That was Newton's method. We did a lot of that with zeros. But we can do this for functions if we're given y equals f of x, and we can use the following uh, formula here, that f of x plus delta x is approximately f of x plus delta y. Delta y, excuse me, ty. It would be helpful if I said it right. All right, so in this case, this, since what we're going to do is we're going to replace dy with f prime of x dx. That's how we defined it, okay? Now, how did I get this? You start off by saying that delta y is equal to the difference here. So if I have f of x plus delta x minus, oh, excuse me, uh, that delta y here, minus, so I'll just go ahead and write it this way, uh, f of x is equal to delta y, which is approximately dy, right? Then I can say that f of x plus delta x, I'm going to add f of x to both sides, is approximately f of x plus dy, which is f prime of x dx. And this is the guy that you're going to want to put to memory. That's this guy right here. And we're going to use that to do some approximations. Now, the key with any approximations is to pick a good value for x to start off with. And I don't mean to get to the point where it's so exact that it's uh, practically the answer, but we can use our calculator to help us out with this a little bit. It says use differentials to approximate the square root of 16.5. Now 16.5 is pretty close to 16, and I know how to find the square root of 16. So if I'm going to pick a value for x, I'm going to let x be 16 in this problem. My function is taking the square root of it, so it's the square root of x. So that means that f prime of x would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 square roots of x. So now that I have that, I'm going to use the formula here that f of x plus delta x is approximately f of x plus f prime of x dx. All right, so now if x is 16, because that's pretty close to 16.5, that means that delta x would be 0 0.5. It would be positive because we have to add those values. So f of 16.5 would be f of 16 plus 0 0.5, which is approximately f of 16 plus f prime of 16 times dx. Now, in this case, delta x is 0 0.5, so that means dx is 0 0.5, and I'll go ahead and write that down. So this is approximately, now f of 16, our function is the square root of x, so this would be 4 plus f prime uh, where did I write? Here it is. F prime of 16. You'd have to put a 16 in there. That would be what? 1 8 times 0.5, which of course is 1 half. So I get uh, 4 and 1 16th. Now if I get Mr. Calculator out, 4 and 1 16th is uh, 4.0625. Now let's actually take the square root of 16.5 on my calculator to see exactly how close we got. So let's take the square root of 16.5. Hopefully you can see that. And what do I get? I get 4.062019202. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, within what, five ten thousandths? That's not too bad at all. So, and that's because we picked a good approximation. Now, you could do this again if you wanted to pick, let's say, x equals nine, but that would mean that our delta x would be much bigger, and we want to keep delta x uh, to be a nice small number. Now, you say, well, what if the, instead of 16.5, we had had 15.5? 
then even though typically we pick delta x to be a positive number, I would have used it as a negative number. I would have kept x at 16 and had delta x as negative 0.5, and I would have gotten the same. Uh, I would have gotten a good answer. I would have gotten a good approximation. So be careful with these. Practice them. I've seen them on the AP before. It doesn't hurt to make sure that we have all of our approximation methods figured out and uh, be able to use them uh, when necessary.